Hi there and welcome back to my animation channel. Thanks very much for joining me. In this video we'll look at how I animated the rest of the scene with the flamingos flying down the gorge or the valley. In the previous video we looked at how I animated the actual flamingos using plastic and in this video we'll be looking at how I animated the flamingos in the scene using sub x sheets so the first thing is what are sub x sheets the best way to explain sub x sheets is that they take columns that are in your x sheet they take all these columns and they put them into one column or a, or a folder and that's called a sub x sheet so they a way to clean up your x sheet when you're working on a very big animation it can get very busy on your X sheet. So using sub X sheets is a way to clean up your X sheet, make your animation a lot simpler. And it also opens up a lot of opportunity to animate using these sub X sheets that would be quite difficult to do just using separate columns. Sub X sheets both simplify and they multiply. They simplify by taking all your multiple columns and all your keys that are in your animation and putting them in one column, these columns in, in purple here. And they also multiply. You can then go and copy these columns and you can have multiple copies of that first animation in separate columns and this is all of one little piece of animation that you created originally so you can both simplify your animation and you can also multiply your animations and that's what I used in the scene because there's six flamingos I basically animated one flamingo and then used sub sheets to multiply off that very nice clean and easy technique to animate so I can highly recommend using sub x sheets they take a little while to get used to but once you've got the hang of them they are very very cool to use they're also editable so you can always go back into your sub x sheet and edit the underlying animation or the drawings in the x sheet so you can snap in and out of them and edit inside the sub x sheet which is very cool so how you create sub x sheets is you collapse your columns and they become sub x sheets. I'll show you how to do that now. Looking at the animation of the flamingo that we created in the previous video and you can see it is limited to 36 frames here. Now if we want that animation, if we want that flamingo to fly the whole way through the scene, we'll have to go and copy all those frames which we did previously and paste them all the way down and do the same to the keys, copy and paste all the way down. This is quite a long process and it's quite a tedious process if you're doing a, a big scene with a lot of a lot of moving parts to it, it can be quite tedious. So that's where we can step in with something like sub X sheets and simplify our workflow. And how this works is we take all the columns that we want to collapse into one sub X sheet and we select them all. And then we can right click, bring up the menu and select the collapse button. Or we can go to the collapse button up on the menu here and select that or we can go up to the X sheet button scroll down and select the collapse button there so there's three ways to do this click collapse and you can see what happens here it takes all those four columns and it puts it into one column which is now purple and that is the sub X sheet now if we want to open the sub X sheet we select it and we can again using the three different ways open it we're just going to use that menu button there and you can see it opens it into four different columns now observe it's left the background out so it's cut the background out of the view we'll cover that later how to get that back if you want to collapse it again you can go up to the menu here the open and close button is right next to each other you can just select that and again it's collapsed it into the sub x sheet so within a few clicks you've cleaned up your whole x sheet which is pretty cool let's open it again here and there we are looking into our sub x sheet we're in our sub x sheet now with our four columns and no background which we'll cover shortly so we go and close the sub x sheet again now to bring that background up because every time we went into our sub x sheet it had cut out the background to bring it up we use something called edit in place and there's a toggle on off button which i'll show you how to use now so as you can see when we click in and out of the sub x sheet our background disappears and 
how we'll change that is we go up to the menu bar, we select X sheet, we scroll down to the toggle edit in place and we click that and you see that button there lights up into the blue and that's showing that our edit in place is open. And now if we click in and out of the sub X sheet and we go out of the sub X sheet, back into the sub X sheet, you can see that our background is there. So once again, up to the X sheet, toggle edit in place and we turn it off and now when we go into our sub x sheet the background has disappeared again or been hidden again so let's do it again turn it on again you can see that button goes blue which tells it's on and now we're toggling in and out of the sub x sheet and our background is there so that's how you turn it on and off it's handy sometimes to have it hidden and sometimes you want to see the background there so you can animate your piece around the background and that's how you do it using the edit in place toggling it on and off the next thing we'll be looking at is how we animate using sub X sheets. So once we've collapsed our whole animation into a sub X sheet, we can copy and paste it and expand it into our whole scene here, much like we did with the four columns, but now we're only doing it with one column. And then one of the really powerful parts of sub X sheets is you can actually animate the sub X sheet level. You can an animate that, that new column, that purple column individually as though it's its own animation. The underlying animation in the sub X sheet on the four columns will remain the same, but you can take this new column that has got all those four columns in it and you can animate it independently. So that's pretty cool. You can have an animation within an animation. So you can do things like change the step of some parts of this animation, which we're doing here, increasing it by one step. Here we're increasing it by two steps, which makes that part of the animation slow down. You can go and change the center and the position and the scale of the animation. And remember, we're doing this on the sub X sheet column itself, not the underlying animations, which makes the animation a lot simpler, a lot cleaner because you don't have all the underlying keys and parts that go into the underlying animation. You're just animating this one column now. So it's very, very cool to use. Now the underlying animation was only 36 frames. So at the end of every 36 frames, it will come to an end and when you're stitching up your animation, if you want to call it that, every 36 frames ends and the new 36 begin, there will be a join there and it will jump because you have to go and set the key for the last, the 36 frame and the key for the first frame and you have to join these together. So we're turning on our onion skins here and we are placing the 36 frame and then we're going and placing the first frame of the next 36 and we are joining this animation up so it's it's seamless and it runs through smoothly so we're doing that every 36 frame here we missed one here so we're just going back and putting one in and then we can play with the scale we want the bird to be bigger at the beginning and as it flies into the scene it, it can get smaller and there we go it's starting to come together Another thing I mentioned is you can use sub X sheets to multiply your animations. What I mean by that is that once you've animated one column of the sub X sheet, you can, you can copy and paste that and, and use it many times. You can do this in conventional animation, but it's quite messy with all the keys involved, etc. So it's much, much easier to do that using sub X sheets. So we just go and select the column copy and paste it and we can multiply this one animation of a flamingo and make it into many animated flamingos and that's how I put this whole scene together. So we've copied the keys over as well so it's going to basically follow the first flamingo and we don't want that so we just add every 36 frame we where we have keys set and on the first frame of the next strip, we are just separating them so that they are not on top of each other. And then we can go and do this again in the third bird and we can keep doing this. And again, we need to move it so that they're not on top of each other. And then we can do this on more birds until we have our scene full of flamingos here. Now, because they're all copies, the flamingos are going to be all beating or flapping at the same time, which is unnatural. So how we change that quite easily is just to stagger the, the beats, stagger the animation. So you just go and take out some frames in every level so that they're starting on different frames and that will be a quick fix to 
sort out that and there we go the next thing we're going to look at is editing within the sub X sheets as I mentioned earlier that's one of the benefits of using sub X sheets is you can go back and edit the underlying animation so I'll just show you how that works here we have our sub X sheet and we click the button to take us into the sub X sheet and there is our underlying animation there the 36 frames we work from if we want to go and change the actual animation of that wing beat or the body we can go back into our plastics bottom left click plastics up to the middle top and click the animate and we can go and change the actual animation here I'm going to just for example here break these wings up a little bit just to show how it works we change the underlying animation and then we go and close the sub X sheet so it brings us out again and we play it and there is the new animation that's copied these frames throughout the animation you can see the bent wings I've also left the plastic on the green stuff so let's go back in there and turn that off and there we go you've got the wings are now changed and that'll be throughout the animation including the copies that we made of so once you change the underlying animation it will change it throughout the sub x sheet the copies that you make thereof it'll all be changed which is something to keep in mind it can be a benefit you also need to be aware of that if you if you do make changes that it will be throughout whatever sub x sheets you've copied and throughout your scene will will be affected if you go and change that underlying animation so quite a strong aspect of sub x sheets there Last, I'll just look at finishing off the scene. So that's how I animated these flamingos on separate sub X sheets. They're all copied from one underlying animation, basically 36 frames, and the rest of it has just been animated on their own sub X sheets. And every sub X sheet basically contains a flamingo made up of two parts of wings and the body, and the animation of the wings and the body has been in plastic. So it's it's that straightforward. Now if we'd done that conventionally and we had the first 36 frames copied and pasted all the way down and then we had copied those four columns another six times, four, six, 24, that would be 24 columns of, of animation and if we wanted to change something we'd have to go and change them individually etc etc. It would be very busy on your X sheet and it would look an absolute mess. It would be a lot more work and it would be unnecessary when you have something like sub X sheets to use I highly recommend them especially for something like this which is basically a lot of copying it makes animating in open tunes a whole lot cleaner and easier and I highly recommend you you get your head around them and use them where you can so the very last thing we're going to do here is render it out. I've dropped in my credits here on different levels in between the flamingos. And there is our final scene. The background has changed. Um, I mentioned I changed it in, in the final animation. And there are our flamingos, all six of them flying down the river valley. And that's it. Please go and check out the links in the description for my courses. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe. Also, if you'd like to sign up to receive newsletters, please sign up for that. And otherwise, thanks very much for joining me. And I'll hopefully see you again here soon. All the best. Bye.